The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome again to another Lower Seed Biology learning session. I am your facilitator, Dama Charles Bobga. And before we go to the new lesson of today, uh, remember I left you with an assignment of last class to give tabulated differences between fruit mosaic model and the Danieli Defsin model. Fruit mosaic model and the Danieli Defsin model. So tabulated differences means you put them in a table. So let's look at what you must have put down. So we have on one side the fruit mosaic model and the other side Danieli Defsin or what we call the sandwich model. So the first difference is that the re, this is a model for, for fluid mosaic models, a model where large proteins are embedded partially or completely in a lipid layer. So we saw that already in the last lesson. And on that Daniel Jefferson model, the phospholipid bilayer is sandwiched between two layers of proteins. We saw that the fluid mosaic model was built on uh, the Daniel Jefferson model. Now we see again the second difference that proteins are embedded either partially or completing, but the two layers in under Daniel Defsin, the two layers of proteins, uh, there are two layers of proteins, and protein uh, layers coat the outer surfaces. We saw that. And we saw that uh, the fluid mosaic is the most accurate model, and um, this uh, Daniel Defsin is the first model, not very accurate, but it formed the foundation that we can build up that the fluid mosaic model was built up. We saw also in our discussion that proteins permeate the lipid layer. Proteins permeate the lipid layer, but, lipid layer. but in the Daniel Defsin, proteins do not permeate the lipid layer. And we saw again that the, pro the proponents of this uh, uh, fluid mosaic model was Nick Carlson and Singer, at least those who, 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 who discovered it uh, it makes a difference. And, the ones of um, uh, the uh, the ones of the the, the bilayer was by Danieli and Defsin. So those are the few examples um, you know, uh, differences between these two models. But the most accepted model is the Fried mosaic model. So we have looked at the plasma membrane as an organelle, as a structure of a prokaryotic cell. We are going to continue with other prokaryotic uh, organelles, other eukaryotic organelles, sorry, other organelles of eukaryotic cells, and we'll treat them one by one because the proper understanding of these organelles will give us an insight into the function of the organism. But of course, we're going to run through our objectives. We are going to uh, discuss the, the things that you are supposed to have known, that's prerequisite information. We are going to apply uh, our lesson to real life situation. Activities will come, exercises, and then we will uh, give you, place you on an assignment before you go home. So what is the objective of this lesson? Describe the structure and function of other plant and animal organelles. So we are going, other than the plasma membrane, we're going to pick other plant and animal organelles and we'll start looking at them. So, of course, you know prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells already. You know that diagram. You have had the list of all the organelles and the key function of 
the organelles. So we're going to be looking at, at the organelles. So what is our real life situation? We're looking at a city that is highly fortified with many police checkpoints. Of course, we are familiar with our cities. There are many police checkpoints. Now, because of the constant light failure, solar panels are installed in that city. This city is filled, uh, full of communication traffics or roads. There are many communication tracks in that city. That takes you from one part of the city to the other. And this city can be known to, to function well without any interference. So that picture in mind is giving you something about the cell. It tells you something about the cell. That is cell is like a fortified city. Access to that city is checked by many police. And what are these access to the cities? The pores that are on the plasma membrane. Who are these police referring to? Is referring to the integral proteins that will guard the pores. And when there is light failure, what happens? Solar alternative energy. So the cells have the alternative energy, and this energy comes from mitochondria. So mitochondria are like solar panels. They produce energy. They convert the chloroplasts convert the solar panels convert uh, energy from um, the sun to, to, to electric. So chloroplasts also converts light to chemical. So it, 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 it functions like the solar panel. And this city is filled with communication roads. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the canaliculi that are found in the cell, the traffic system that is made up of endoplasmic reticuli and the Golgi apparatus. So that's, that's the communication. And with all these membrane-bound com uh, cells, the, the, the checkpoints that enter the cell and all the other organisms specialized for the function, that city, same as the cell, can function without any interference. So cells are, can produce the substances and function without any interference. So that's the picture I want you to see. So the whole cell is a city. The many checkpoints are the, point, are the points of entry, the cell, the pores. And the policemen that could be in the city are the integral proteins. And we have energy organelles and canals that will package and transport substances within the cell. So our hypothesis, the cell is a unit with many parts performing diverse functions. So that's what the analogy is trying to tell us. So we are now from the analogy seeing that the cell is a unit that with many parts and functions. And the new hypothesis is that the cell is not a unit with many parts performing diverse, diverse functions. So at the end, we're going to see which hypothesis to uphold or which one to throw. Now, we're going to look at the first of the organelles. And this organelle we're looking at is the traffic system that we saw in the city. The traffic system. Endoplasmic reticulum. We call it ER for short. It's also called ER for short. ER, so we see ER is endoplasmic reticulum. And now you can see that it is connected to the nuclear envelope. The nuclear membrane is connected to it. So it's a continuous membrane. That pulls, we're going to see it on the diagram. So it's the highway of the cell, same as the traffic system that is found in the city. And we have two types of endoplasmic reticuli. There is the endoplasmic reticulum that is called rough because it is the surface is stuffed by ribosomes that make proteins. There is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum called smooth ER, no ribosomes, but it makes lipids. So that's very important. It makes lipids. Now look at this. So we're talking about the rough endoplasmic reticulum. See that it is connected to the nuclear produce and it has a traffic system. Look at it. It has a traffic system. So it has a traffic system, so a system of communication. So it is this structure connected to the nuclear produce. That's enlarged. Look at it here, connected to the nuclear envelope. It is enlarged. So it has vesicles. See, vesicles are formed from it. So you have those black spots are called ribosomes. So this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it's connected to the nuclear apparatus, connected to the nuclear apparatus. So that is worth noting. So the endoplasmic reticulum contains three types of structures. We have first the cystine, the channels, the cavities. 
So these ones are the cisterne. That's it. We have uh, the vesicles. So these ones are the vesicles. Then we have um, we have the tubules. So we're going to look at all those parts. So those are parts of the endoplasmic structures that are considered to the whole apparatus of the endoplasmic reticulum. So what are the cysteine? These are long and flat on branch plates or lamellae arranged in para rows. Look at that diagram. You see these ones are cysteine, para rows. They are para to each other. So those are the cysteine. So they are channels of communication. Arranged in para rows, the physicals, round and ovoid. Look at this. They are rounded, ovoid. And we're going to see that the substance is synthesized by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the ribosome, mostly proteins, are enclosed by these vesicles. Remember that proteins are enzymes. If they are not immediately picked and enclosed, then they can damage your cell. The enzymatic functions can damage your cell. Remember that most of these vesicles that pinch up and enclose the protein, they will form lysosomes. We're going to see. So we have these vesicles, round and over sacs. They contain, uh, they, they, they often occur isolated in the cytoplasm. So we have the third part, the tubules, irregularly branched tube-like structures having a diameter between 50 to 100 nanometers, and they're surrounded by unit membrane, and the lumen is filled with secretive products. So these tubules, these are still tubules. These are still tubules. So. Those are the components of the endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we have two types of endoplasmic reticuli in the cell. There is the smooth, endo, uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So the other one that we saw uh, was the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Those are two types. Now look at it. This one is a smooth. It has no, no, the smooth is here. It has no uh, ribosomes. So it's smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now look at this one here. It's rough. Rough endoplasmic reticulum. Because of the grains of ribosomes that are found <clears throat> on it. So... Remember that I told you that the cavities of this smooth endoplasmic reticulum are connected to the cavity of the nuclear envelope. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, a, the surface has no attached ribosomes. And then what are the functions of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum? We, we saw that, or oh, we're saying that the, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for synthesis of lipids. It doesn't have ri uh, ribosomes, so it cannot produce proteins. So it's responsible for the synthesis of lipids. And the lipids there mostly are cholesterol and phospholipids. Remember that we've seen phospholipids in the case of uh, plasma membrane. So it means that some of the proteins that they synthesize, they go to, to build up the plasma membrane. So the smooth ER is also responsible for the production and secretion of steroid hormones. So most of the hormones that we have in the body, of course, we're going to have a time to study the endocrine system. Most of the hormones we have in the body, these hormones are produced by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So it's very important. So there is the production of um, phospholipids and there's the production and secretion of hormones. Of course, you know hormones are proteins, and hormones are produced by ductless glands in the cell, and hormones are injected directly into the bloodstream, and they're transported to target organs where they bring about a change or they correct a situation. So, it is also responsible for carbohydrate metabolism. So carbohydrate metabolism are those reactions that concern carbohydrates. It also stores and releases calcium ions. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum stores and releases calcium ions. 
It means that muscles and nerves are, and nerve muscle junctions are dependent on calcium ions from the ER. So it stores them, releases them when the body needs, transports them uh, to the right uh, part of the cell where it is needed. They are also quite important in the nervous system, muscular system, because of this calcium ion that they store and they release. So that is very, very important. So that was the smooth ER. That was a smooth ER. This ER here, that has no ribosome, smooth ER, the first type of endoplasmic reticulum. Now I want to look at the second type of endoplasmic reticulum. It is called the rough ER. R -E -R, rough because its surface is not smooth. It has ribosomal grains implanted on the surface. And these ribosomal grains um, help to synthesize proteins. Remember that the rough endoplasmic reticulum is a system of interconnected channels. Remember that in the analogy of the city, fortified city, we had a traffic system. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum form a traffic system that will facilitate the intracellular transport of molecules. We have seen that there's hormones and steroids and phospholipids, so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum will transport them. Now we're seeing that this one plays a role uh, because of ribosomes in the synthesis and packaging of proteins. Now look at it. <clears throat> so that is how it functions. So you have the nuclear apparatus. Look at those black dots, these are ribosomes. Look at this one, this is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the nuclear envelope. So you see the cavity of the double membrane, the nuclear envelope, is continuous with the cavity of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then vesicles pinch off from here, vesicles pinch up from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and some of these vesicles now form the Golgi body, which we are going to look at later. So the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is very important. So what are some of its summary functions? The first one is that rough ER is associated with protein synthesis. That one is very clear. Because the ribosomes, and we've seen the role of ribosomes in protein synthesis, they help in protein synthesis. The second function is that they also, they also play a very important role in protein folding. Remember that proteins are synthesized long chain, primary. They're folded to secondary. They are folded again to tertiary, folded again to quaternary. So this folding process of proteins is the work of the endoplasmic reticulum rough. So the most important function after protein synthesis is protein folding. So in summary, it synthesizes and folds the proteins into the primary, into the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures then it will excrete package and send them to where they are needed by the cell. So, after looking at those summary functions of ribosomes, protein synthesis, protein folding, and then protein, um, protein synthesis and protein folding, we'll look at the next organelle, the ribosomes. The ribosomes. The ribosomes are rounded structures. They are found attached to uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum in the, in the cell, or they may lie bare in the cytoplasm. They can be lying bare in the cytoplasm, and we call them ribonucleoproteins. And these are particles that have a variable length and diameter, a length, variable length between 200 and 340 uh, nanometers, and a diameter of 170 to 240. Uh, nanometers. The function as sites of protein synthesis. Remember that the ribosomes have two subunits. The subunits are level S. For example, you have a 70 sub S subunit, you have an 80 S subunit, and these um, subunits are labeled as a degree as a factor uh, considering their degree of ability to sediment when they are centrifuge. So that's very important. So the function as sites of synthesis. And the ribosomes forms a framework on which the messenger RNA 
is injected, is, is, um, is uh, connected to keep it in place so that transfer RNAs can bring the respective amino acids. And each ribosome, as I said, consists of two unequal parts, unequal units, the larger dome-shaped structure and a smaller uh, epsiloid part of the ribosome. So the large subunit has a protuberance, a ridge, and a stalk. We're going to see in the diagram. So you see this one. You see a large subunit. You see a small subunit. Then it has a protuberance. Protuberance is this uh, gap in between the subunits. So it has a protuberance. So we have two subunits, the larger subunit with the protuberance and a stock. So we have, again, the smaller subunit which possesses a cleft, a head, and a base. So it's about half the size of the larger subunit. So that is a, a symbolic representation of a ribosome. Remember that it has uh, a ridge, and this ridge, look at the polypeptide is passing through the ridge. So that is a polypeptide chain showing you how it is produced during protein synthesis. So the polypeptide chain is always hooked to a ribosome. So a ribosome has four sides for specific attachment. A ribosome has a place for the attachment of messenger RNA. Remember that the messenger RNA comes onto the ribosome to attach to bring the proper amino acids. The second uh, point is that the amino, it has an amino acid site for binding of newly arrived uh, amino acid carrying the, uh, transfer RNA. That's called the A site. It has the P site where the transfer RNA carrying, uh, uh, where the transfer RNA carrying the growing polypeptide attaches. And it has the E site or the exit site to free the transfer RNA. So the, 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 the ribosome is not as simple as we look at it. It's complicated because the, the function of the ribosome is pivotal in the, in the release, in the synthesis of polypeptide chain. Remember that every expressible thing we have on Earth, from enzymes to structures to everything, depends on a delicate and a proper alignment of amino acids. Now, ribosomes also contain Ribosomal RNA, we saw that in a previous lesson, and they provide a point of attachment for messenger RNAs and transfer RNAs. Of course, ribosomes are considered as factories. So if the cell was a fortified city, then we have in that cell, in the analogy, we also have many factories, and ribosome is one of them. There are factories for solar, uh, solar producing energy, the mitochondria. We have factories for protein synthesis, the ribosomes. So. We have these categories of ribosomes. We also have also free ribosomes. Uh, free ribosomes are important because they synthesize structural and enzymatic proteins for use within the cell. The attached ribosomes uh, also synthesize proteins that help in transport. So what are we trying to say? That there is a lot of specialization of functions and compartments in the ribosome that aids all together in the production of proteins, so that's very important. So ribosomes provide enzymes, and, and they provide enzymes and factors that will help to condense the amino acids to polypeptides. So even when the transfer RNAs bring their amino acid, it's still the work of ribosome that will provide enzymes that will um, condense the amino acids. It's very important. Ribosomes uh, with the ribosomal RNA provide points of attachment for messenger RNA and transfer RNA. Ribosome has a tunnel for messenger RNA uh, so that it can easily be translated. So all those structures uh, are in all these uh, features uh, that we see in the, in the ribosome. So that's very important. So if we go back to our um, uh, real life situation, we see that there is a highly fortified city. What does that highly fortified city represent analogy? It's analogous to the, the protective um, uh, structure, the plasma membrane. It protects the entire cell. It protects the entire cell. Then we have, in that city, police checkpoints. So what are these checkpoints? These checkpoints are cell components that will do a variety of 
functions. For example, we have the, we're going to see the Golgi bodies. We have seen the endoplasmic reticulum, the package. So we see the integral proteins that help to control, uh, check in what is coming and what is going out. We see the, 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 the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum that check the proteins, that check the lipids. So it's very important. So these are like police checkpoints within a fortified city. So what are the solar panels? We have seen that the solar panels will convert energy. So chloroplasts, we're going to see later on, are solar pa are like solar panels in the city, but the chloroplasts in the living organism will convert sun's energy into chemical energy. So this is very, very important. So again, the communication traffic routes are the rough ER and the smooth ER. Remember that we saw in the diagrams, a lot of communication pathways. Look at these channels. These are the communication canals. Look at this one. These ones are the communication canal. They are there, all there. Look at this uh, other one, communication canals. So they have a system of communication, like roads within, within a city, like roads within a city. So it's very important that we know that the, the ribosomes are a communication network. It's a transport system, intercellular transport system. So they transport all the materials that are synthesized by the cell and they take it out of the cell. So remember that the process in the cell we're going to study, like exocytosis, when the vesicle that we saw attached to the ribosome has gotten enough protein and another cell needs it, it will go right to the cell membrane, fuses it uh, to it and discharge the contents uh, to where it is needed. So all those ones are important systems of communication. The Golgi bodies are uninterrupted power supplies for the cell because they constantly produce uh, raw materials for, for, for production of other substances. So what can we say about, now that we have a knowledge of uh, some, a few more organelles, so what can we say about our hypothesis? That the cell is a, is a unit with many parts. So we're looking at the organelles at the many parts. Like the city has many specialized units performing diverse coordinated functions within the cell. So that is very important. So I leave you with this exercise. You will do it. Name an organelle which serves as a primary packaging area for molecules that will be distributed throughout the cell. Is it the mitochondrion? Is it the plastids? Are they Golgi bodies? Are they vacuoles? We're going to see the response. And the second question, which among the following sentence is not correct about organelles? Look at it. They are found in all eukaryotic cells. They are found in all multicellular organisms. They coordinate to produce the cell. They are small uh, size and mostly internal. So we're going to look at the plausible response. Now look at it, number one. So name the organelle that serves as the primary packaging area. We have seen that organelle, and that organelle is none other than uh, Golgi body C, Golgi apparatus. We're going to see that it helps in packaging. And the second um, um, uh, question, the response is being, uh, it means that, uh, which is not correct, that they are all found in multicellular organisms, not organelles. Organelles are not found in all multicellular organisms. So that statement is not accurate about, um, about organelles. So that is it about that exercise. So the exercise is trying to consolidate what we've studied, uh, we've talked about so far. Now the assignment for the next lesson, again, you know, when I ask for tabulated differences, it means that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to evaluate you place on a level of comprehension, which implies that you have a synthetic ability to bring points together. So give tabulated differences between an organelle and an inclusion. This is where there's a lot of confusion. So your research will clear up this doubt in the next, uh, next lesson. Of course, keep consulting uh, comprehensive A-level biology concepts and application. And then I will see you in the next lesson where we will be talking again still about some other specific organelles of the cell. Tam tam amote tam zabike 
Tam tama tonge, tam zabike, tam tam tama mote, tam zabike. Mane tambia ninyane, njubia yen, 